Hi, I'm Eric Kelly from kellyplanet.com. This is a closer look at Star Trek The Next Generation, Season 4, Episode 16, Galaxy's Child. We're approaching Starbase 313, where we will pick up a shipment of scientific equipment for transport to a Federation outpost in the Guernica system. During the journey, we will be hosting a special guest. Come. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder who this special guest is. Hey, there's Jordy, and this special guest is coming aboard just to see him. Guess what? It's Leah Brahms. Played by Susan Gibney, we saw her before in Booby Trap, and we will again on Lower Decks, as well as Captain Benteen on Deep Space Nine. Jordy is pretty thrilled about this. This is terrific. It is? I mean, I've studied her schematics for years. She was responsible for a lot of the engine design on the Enterprise. Well, it should be a very enjoyable visit then. <laughs> yeah, he studied her schematics, all right. There's Whoopi getting in some gun and screen time. Jordy tells her all about Leah Brahms because she wasn't in that other episode. In case you missed that one, the Enterprise was in trouble and Jordy needed some help, so Leah Brahms is the one who designed the ship's engines back at Utopia Planitia. So he had the computer whip up a hologram version of her, and they were all flirty and stuff. Guyden says, yeah, lots of people fall in love with fantasies. No, no, Guyden, see, you've got it all wrong. I'm not necessarily expecting anything romantic here. It's just, I know whatever. Leah Brahms and I are going to be good friends. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Hey, there's April Grace again. And there's Dr. Brahms. Jordy says, hi, I'm Chief Engineer LaForge. And she's like, oh, you're the one who fouled up my engine designs. This is starting well. So her problem is that he changed her specs for the original plans. And his defense is that things are a bit different out in the field. And he had to make adjustments. Yep, she's getting a phone call. And he says, God, you can take it to my office. Commander. I am picking up some unusual readings in the Alpha Omicron system. At this range, all I am able to discern is that it is an asymmetrical field of intense energy. What type of radiation signature? Unknown, sir. Data suggests they go check this out, and Riker says okay. Jordy is trying to make friends with Brahms, and offers to show her his mods in the dilithium chamber, so he shuts it off, so they have no warp engines. So how are they on their way to check that thing out? No, oh, I guess they're already there. I don't know. And there's the thing Data had detected earlier. Is it a ship? It does not conform to any known design. Any records of similar phenomena in Starfleet Blisters? No, sir. This has never been seen before. It's Rega. I had one quarter impulse. So they are checking out the crystals, and she says, Wow, these aren't right. And Jordy says, Oh, you remember we had to change those up in that other episode? And she's like, Why would I remember that? Because she doesn't know about the hologram version of herself. She says, this is kind of odd, because this is the way I was going to do it in my next ship design. So how did Jordy know? Well, he kind of sidesteps that and says, hey, we should get together later and, like, you know, go over stuff or something. Uh, my quarters. 1,900 hours. Maybe even have a bite to eat. I make a great Funjili. I love Funjili. <laughs> is that right? A hologram Brahms told him that before. Data says here that from what he can tell, that space pierogi thing outside is some kind of life form. Riker tells Data to launch three probes, because I guess one just isn't enough. Hey, here's Troy, so I bet she's going to sense something. Worf says, yo, we're getting probed and wants to raise shields, but Picard says no. Then the space pierogi zaps the Enterprise, so now Worf gets to raise the shields. That thing is putting out a ton of radiation. They can't go to warp, and lethal exposure is in like one minute. So they shoot it. And Data says, yep, I'm pretty sure it's dead now out here to explore, to make contact with other life forms, to establish peaceful relations, but not to interfere, and absolutely not to destroy. Well, since Troy didn't sense anything, she's there to tell Picard that this is not his fault. Then Data says, hey, I'm getting new energy readings from that thing we killed. But before we get to that, we have to go check on Jordy, who's getting ready for dinner with Dr. Brahms, and uh, there she is. She's like, <laughs> well, you changed. And he's like, yeah, I don't wear my uniform all the time. Wow, your hair is different uh, than, like, your personnel files. And she's like, why are you accessing those? And he's like, well, it's uh, it's protocol. Long scene short, she tells him that she thinks of her engine designs like her children. And he says, yeah, I know, me too. Uh, how about some dinner? And she says, yeah, yeah, I got to go. This isn't appropriate. I'll see you tomorrow. This new concentration of energy was detected only after the surrounding material became inert. The radiation signature is similar to the original pattern, but with significant differences. I believe it is separate and self-contained within the body of the dead life form. <laughs> oh my god, so it was pregnant. Got it. The doc tells us that the space progy baby probably isn't fully developed yet and may not be able to survive without the parent. 
Troy's like, well, what can we do? And Bev says, well, normally I would do a C-section. We could use our phasers as a scalpel. The parent proved to be a threat to the ship. We do not know how the offspring will react. We are directly responsible for the death of the parent. We cannot simply wash our hands of it now. So, cesarean it is. It's the next day, so Jordy and Brahms are in the Jeffrey's tubes, and I point this out because this is the first time we see them like this, and that's how they will be from now on. Like, crawl tunnels. Anyway, he made some mods in there, and she thinks they're pretty cool. Commander LaForge, ever since I came on board, you seem to know things about me, even though we've never met. <sighs> He says, yeah, I know, I kind of stalked you on Facebook and read all of your work, and I was hoping we could be friends, you know, maybe like good friends. I thought you knew. If I'm hearing what I think I'm hearing, then you should know that I'm married. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know that. And we didn't either until just now. The Enterprise phaser scalpels the alien space pierogi thing, and uh, ah, there we go. Come on, little one. Push. Push. <laughs> Good job, Doc. Jordy is all bummed and tells Gunnan, Ugh, Brahms is cold and kind of mean, and she's married. Not at all like on the holodeck. And Gunnan says, well, you must have had your beer goggle visor on back then, because he saw her the way he wanted to see her. Now, she's probably done the most horrific thing one person can do to another. Not live up to your expectations. See her for who she is. Not for what you want her to be. Data says the space baby seems to be fine, so Picard says, great, let's get out of here. But it follows the Enterprise and they can't lose it. It's imprinted on us. It thinks the Enterprise is its mother. Change in energy reading, sir. I am reading an internal buildup of gamma particles. Its velocity is increasing. Oh no, the space baby latched onto the aft part of the dorsal section, and they can tell because there must be a camera floating between the warp nacelles or something. Anyway, the thing is draining energy from the ship, and Troy says, yeah, just like, you know, milk. It's a baby. Worf says, well, what should we do? And Picard's all like, we're not going to do anything, uh, you know, but they should. Captain Vlog Supplemental. Since the newborn has attached itself to the hull, it has been making greater and greater demands on the ship's energy. But we have been able to stabilize our power systems temporarily. Jordy says we have six or seven hours until the energy drain becomes a real problem. Data says he can probably figure out where the parent was heading before they killed it, so the plan is to try to take the baby there. Dr. Brahms is brushing up on all the mods Jordy had done, and she finds Jordy's holodeck program, so she goes to check that out on Holodeck 3. Uh-oh, that's Hologram Brahms from the other episode. Jordy walks in, and she is not happy. It's not like that. I swear... I'm outraged by this. I have been invaded, violated. How dare you use me like this? How far did it go, anyway? Was it good for you? Jordy says, no, 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 it wasn't like that, I swear. And by the way, you've been a jerk to me since you came on board. I've shown you courtesy and respect and a hell of a lot of patience. I'm guilty of a terrible crime, doctor. I offered you friendship. Yeah, but this is why you shouldn't make holodeck characters based on real people, Barkley. Data has determined that the parent alien was headed to an asteroid belt, so that's where they're going to go. That was quick, and Data says he thinks that the alien pierogi things eat these asteroids. They try to pop the baby off the hull by depressurizing Shuttle Bay 2. See, there it is. But that doesn't work, and now it's drawing more power from the ship. Oh look, there are more of those things, and they are headed this way. At their current speed, sir, the entities will intercept us in 10 minutes, 31 seconds. Weapon status? Auxiliary power only. Two seconds phase of fire available. Brahm shows up to engineering and says to Jordy, you know, what we probably need to do is sour the milk, so to speak, so the baby leaves on its own. Here they are talking about how everything in the universe vibrates at 21 centimeters, and I have no idea what that means, but the plan is to change the power frequency gradually until the space baby doesn't like it. Worf says the grown-up aliens are like two minutes away, and they are ready to go down in engineering. Brahm says she dropped the power to two centimeter level, and again, I have no idea what that means, but it's not working. Take it down further. Reading 1.8. The life form is emitting its high frequency transmission. Energy consumption is rising. Captain, the creatures are accelerating their approach. Leah is dropping the power centimeters even lower, and the auxiliary generators are about to crap out, but just in time, the baby space pierogi lets go and joins the others. Good job, you two. 
So now Brahms and LaForge are buddies, and they both apologize for the way they behaved to each other, and everything is cool now. Well, I guess I'm just glad that I got the opportunity to get to know you. The real you. Me too. In case you haven't seen the episode Booby Trap, which is where the Leah Brahms hologram came from, it was in no way implied that Jordy acted in an inappropriate way, though you shouldn't recreate real people in the holodeck, Barkley again. And I can see why the real Leia was offended, but I bring this up because apparently some people hated this episode for making LaForge look all rapey, I guess. But I don't believe that's what went down for a second. Generally speaking, Jordy isn't all that great with the ladies, except for that one episode when Christy Henshaw was all about him out of the blue for no reason, and then that thread totally went nowhere. Both Rick Berman and Michael Piller really liked this episode, and I liked it too. I don't think it was as good as some coming up. I was going to go three deltas out of five, but I like Susan Gibney, so I'm going to go four. You can let me know how you feel about that. If you liked that video, thank you. Maybe hit the like and subscribe buttons if you want. There's more Star Trek videos and other related content on my website. Check it out at kellyplanet.com. I'm Eric Kelly. Live long and prosper.